So it's more, it's really about strength. It's really about uh, that, that, that sheer tension because strength training is that it's slow controlled tension and that's what causes the bone growth. So it's literally just a signaling process, um, that happens through that. Now the, the bone building process, I mean, that's the same process that'll happen when, whenever your body's trying to build bone, um, improving your health will help with that as well. But really the main thing is just, you're telling your body, we need stronger anchor points for these muscles. Right. Yeah. And so your bones just you get- be able to sustain this load and this demand that's uh, being placed on us. By far the best way to strengthen your bones is to lift weights. Resistance training, hands down, nothing comes close to that method of exercise or anything else for that matter in terms of bone strengthening. Then bone uh, gains. That's you it. Know you know, so a study came out um, <clears throat> that two parts of the study- one part's going to make some people annoyed. Oh, well. Hmm. And it showed how vegans, <laughs> I know I've been on a vegan tray lately. Here we go. How vegans tend to show um, kind of bone weakening effects, uh, and they relate it to their diet. Uh, but through strength training, they reverse those. So vegans who strength train don't show any bone weakening effects from their vegan diet. So it's just a, but for everyone else, it also shows bone strengthening effects. So it's not just for vegans, it's everyone else. But really, there's nothing that comes close. Nothing comes close. If you do strength training, it strengthens your muscles. The muscles anchor on the bones. The bones get stronger. There is right. no single thing you can do that even comes close to that at all. Yeah, that force all translates <clears throat> through each part of your tissue uh, to the bone. It's funny, like, if you think back when we were growing up, they used to just, like, pump us with the idea that just having calcium and taking calcium pills was going to be able to keep your bones thick so and healthy. Crazy. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand the, the vegan thing. Why, why is it not the, the, the basic Western diet and doesn't strength train is the same statistic or same, same data. So when you compare, uh, the traditional Western omnivore diet, so omnivore meaning they also consume meat. Um, first of all, everyone's bones are getting weaker. So there's that's going on, right? But vegans trend more. Right, so they tend to get worse bone weakening effects than. Omnivores. I mean, is it dramatic enough to 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 separate them out like that? I would yes. think you. Would, oh wow, yeah, it's clinically significant. Wow, yeah, it's actually a risk factor. A lot of people don't know this, but I mean, I knew I knew that about strength. If you don't strength train, that's obvious. We know yes. we've known that for a really yes. long time. If you're, I if think you're, it's obvious. I think some people don't know that. Yeah, the biggest really? yeah the biggest risk factors for bone weakening are uh, being female. So women have a much higher rate of. Uh, osteoporosis or osteopenia. Right? Is that due to the lack of testosterone? Lack of testosterone, less muscle mass right. uh, is, is what they think. Um, so uh, female being older, uh, not doing any weight bearing activities. That's another risk factor. Um, and so those are the three biggest kind of things. And now in men, low testosterone can cause bone weakening. Um, obviously still being sedentary causes bone weakening. And then being a vegan also poses as not as much as the other ones, but still poses as a risk factor uh, for bone weakening. And in this particular study, they showed, oh, look, vegans who lift weights or do strength training, they don't have that effect. It's such a powerful bone building stimulus. It's really insane. I had a client, I, I know I've talked about this before on the show, but I remember it, this, I bring it up all the time because the my client's doctor made a case study out of her. So she, I had a client once that she was a college professor and uh, she was talking about how she needs to start strength training or doing something because she, and she was a petite woman, older, so kind of all those risk factors, although very active and healthy. Um, and one of her students w used to work for me. So he goes, oh, my, I, this guy used to work for me. His name is Sal. He's got a wellness studio. Hire him. He knows what he's doing. Anyway, so she came to hire me and her goal was I need to strengthen my bones. Now she was uh, getting to the point where the, the, they had her on, um, I think Fosamax was the drug that she was on. It's kind of like an immune uh, modulating kind of drug um, and a couple of supplement, uh, you know, uh, medications. And they would monitor and every year it was just going down and she was really terrified. She's like, this is really bad. I'm getting to the point where this is not going to be too good. Do you think strength training can help? I said, well, if your muscles get stronger, your bones <coughs> almost always get stronger. However, you're in this particular case. Let's see what happens. For the first time in her, for the first time, and I don't remember how many years, the doctor saw the progression stop to the point where he was like, what are you doing? And she's like, well, I'm doing strength training. This following year, there was a slight increase. Gets on the phone with me and he goes, I want to make this a case study. He goes, I, I, this is insane. And the only thing she's changed is she's lifting weights with you once a week, by the way. We were doing strength training once a week wow. and we saw that effect. 
So it's the it's the absolute best thing you could do to strengthen your bones, uh, and it, because it's a direct stimulus, it's direct yeah connection there between like building muscle and affecting your bones. I mean, it, you look at that with um, astronauts and being in zero gravity, and like the biggest like cause for alarm is if you're up there too long. It's just not only do you start losing muscle, but it's like it affects your bones and um, you know can be crippling when you get back. Yeah, and the whole supplementing with nutrients that your body uses to strengthen bones. First off, if you have a calcium deficiency, a vitamin D deficiency, that's totally different. But the what they the story that they sold us was, <clears throat> hey, you know, for bone loss, let's give you more of these nutrients that we know are important for bone strengthening. But that's like telling somebody to just eat more calories because that'll fuel muscle growth. Well, if there's no stimulus, it ain't gonna happen. You just get fatter. You know what ended up happening with all the extra calcium? People are getting calcium deposits mm -hmm. in their arteries. Mm -hmm. We're actually getting, uh, causing problems because there was no stimulus. It was like you had all the you had extra tools, uh, but you had no orders. You had no priority of where it was going to go. Yeah, so your body's yeah. just going to. What do I do with this calcium? I don't. I don't know. What so, do what are it. all the factors at play? You have uh, the adaptation process to the stimulus from that the bones are getting. You have the muscle protecting. Uh, factors that are happening because you're building muscle that is going to now support that. I would also argue maybe the circulation and nutrients that, that are- Oh, just general health. Yeah. yeah. Like what are what are all the factors that, that strength training is contributing to this? Because it's not just simply it's the stimulus and then the bones are adapting, getting stronger. There's other things at play here, right? Well, it's- you, Like I said, the mus you build muscle, which then now supports- So it's sheer uh, tension and force. Yeah. So like if you do- That's the adaptation force process. creates the growth, right? Yeah. yeah. So what they used to say, they used to say, and they still do this, and, and they're catching up though. They used to say, hey, you need to strengthen your bones. Do um, impact exercises. Mm -hmm. So like walking, jogging, because the impact will strengthen bone. Well, when you look at the studies on that, there is a bone building effect, but it's very small. Brief. And it's also um, confined to the lower extremities. So, okay, I do running. I still will get bone loss in other parts of my body, but my legs, I'm going to kind of stave it off a little bit. So it's more, it's really about strength. It's really about uh, that, that, that sheer tension. Because strength training is that. It's slow, controlled tension. And that's what causes the bone growth. So it's literally just a signaling process. Um, that happens through that. Now, the, the bone building process, I mean, that's the same process that'll happen when, whenever your body's trying to build bone. Um, improving your health will help with that as well. But really, the main thing is just you're telling your body, we need stronger anchor points for these muscles. Right. Yeah. And so your bones just you get- You'll sustain this load and this demand that's uh, being placed on us. Yeah, the adaptation process is really interesting. You ever, I mean- yeah, is, that, and is that process happening still in a caloric deficit? Like, have we have we teased that out to see like what happens when you have somebody in an older population, they're, they're doing strength training and they're in like a caloric deficit versus when they're in a surplus. Are we getting a greater response when they're in a surplus versus when they're in a- I, I don't, uh, I, so I'm not familiar with that, study, I, but I, I would guess, guess that. Mm -hmm. However, you always want to look at context. Calorie deficit, no strength training versus calorie deficit with strength training. Are there going to, is there going to be a dramatic difference? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like one of them is going to preserve muscle, maybe even build muscle and somebody's super deconditioned, right? Cause you could take somebody who does nothing, have them strength train in a deficit and you'll still see strength boosts in some right. muscle. Right. So that's the comparison. But yeah, if you're trying to build or add tissue, you definitely want to fuel some of that. I would surmise that the bone strengthening process doesn't require as many extra calories as the bone as the muscle building because hmm. muscle is so much more active and requires so much more calories to maintain than bone. I don't know if building bone will speed up your metabolism the same way uh, that muscle will, that mm. muscle will. Mm. So it's just, you know. And then at what age do we normally see this the the decline? Like when does it normally happen where people God, it's see earlier and earlier, dude. It's so weird. Is that happening? Yeah, so it used to be 50s and 60s where we start to see this which it, is obvious when you think about like where what, what's happened in the last few decades just yeah. with movement, right? Yeah. Which we're so much more sedentary than what we were 30 years Dude, ago. Dude, we're seeing osteopenia in people in their 30s now. Wow. Which is wild. Women. Women in their 30s are starting to see some of this stuff. So they'll go to the doctor and, and you know, you don't get your screening. I don't know what the age cutoff is. And is it say. always, almost always somebody who's like non-athletic, non-active, doesn't strength train? Is it almost always that? Almost always. Yeah. There's definitely autoimmune issues that can cause sure. bone loss and, and issues like that. But it's almost always those factors. Like you'll almost never see, of course, there's always, you know, exceptions to rules, but you'll almost never see somebody who does strength training <clears throat> 
is built muscle um, and who isn't have who doesn't have nutrient deficiencies have bone loss. Mm -hmm. That almost never happens. Of course, there's always exceptions. There could be an autoimmune issue. There could be something really, you know, um, going on that's just rare. But for the most part, you see somebody that's strong and built and does strength training and doesn't have nutrient deficiencies, they're going to have strong bones. They're yeah. not going to have uh, weak bones. I'm wondering if, uh, and I'm just thinking like a supplement company, like if there's been any emphasis on like, you know, bone growth, like yeah. powder and this, uh, besides like the addition of like calcium, like oh, yeah, other bro. minerals and like, what's the, what's the blend? Like what, vitamin D, calcium, magnesium. That's typically yeah. the three. Yeah, okay. that are in there. Remember, you guys remember coral calcium when that was a thing for a second? Do you remember that? Coral? Doug? Yeah, I do. Uh -uh. It was so, you know, supplement industry is so funny. I don't remember that. They'll take something that everybody's buying and then try to find an angle to sell it to you again. So there's a hype. Everybody take calcium. Everybody take calcium. Then it kind of like, we, you know, waned a little bit. And then companies were like, coral calcium. <laughs> calcium from coral is way better for you. And then there was like this boost in... <laughs> It's, really? Oh, I remember that. I don't oh, remember that one. Doug, oh, you remember yeah. that? I, I do. Yeah. A bunch Doug of fell milk for that. Huh? Trying to keep I did fall for it. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> I did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we do have those coral reef issues that we yeah. need to. Oh, a whole bunch of it's grown back. Did you, see the, did you guys yeah. see the article? Oh, they did. The Great Barrier Reef? Yeah, it's been a record regrowth. Uh, really? Of, awesome. Of, well, because uh, the, the ocean got, uh, it was the pH, right? Like it got too acidic and it was certain. That's to what they said. They were down. saying it was the, the that climate change was destroying the coral reef at, well, at just like rapid it. rates. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of it's come back at like a super fast rate. So now I, I, I posted about that. I'm not an expert on it. And I had some people come on and say that that that's true. It's coming back, but the the variation of the species is much smaller. Hmm. So I guess there's it must have adapted, and so some of them are doing uh, pretty well and coming out or whatever. Nice. Kind of interesting. I didn't hear that one. Didn't yeah, fit the narrative. That's why, huh, bro? Uh, <laughs> don't go there. Where, where is the narrative these days? <laughs> I true. don't. What's up, everybody? Here's the program giveaway for today: Maps Split Bodybuilding Style Workout. Old school split program the right way. You get it for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. And then if we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. You'll get free access to Map Split. All right. We also have a sale going on right now. Maps Starter, a great way to start strength training. This is great for beginners. That program is 50% off. And then we also have the Prime Bundle, which is 50% off. That includes Maps Prime and Maps Prime Pro. These are mobility programs. They go with any workout program or any athletic endeavor. So you can add this to anything to improve mobility, decrease pain, improve performance. So that's also 50% off. Okay. So if you want to, in, if you're interested in the 50% off sale for starter or the prime bundle, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code August 50 for that discount. All right. Here comes the show. Hey, dude, speaking yeah. of that though, did you guys see Bill Maher, dude? Oh, I saw him go off. I, I tell you what, On the man. body acceptance bullshit that the, you know, yeah. the they spin it. He, Boy, he, he, yeah. he went, oh, hey, did you listen to it? I didn't like, listen to it. His, was, oh, I you didn't listen it. to it? So yeah. his it, even his audience was like, I, I felt like they were uh, reluctant to like laugh yeah. because they weren't sure if they were getting set up or what. Uh, As he, yeah. could, but he just kept continuing to drill at home. And you kept hearing like these like subtle, normally like his whole audience, I feel like it's almost like a laugh track. I feel like it's yeah. like whatever oh, he says, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. oh, everyone agrees. We agree. We agree. We agree. Yeah, yeah, we agree. We agree. That's what, <laughs> that's what I hear, right? Where this was like, uh, uh, <laughs> you could tell that like, people were like, yeah, yeah. it was just super uncomfortable. That celebration, that's new. That is new. He, um, you know what it is? So I have a theory on this. So I, as I continue to see this, this is obviously our space and it's annoying because they take body acceptance and twist it and pervert it to mean something completely different, um, which is uh, like, oh, if you're, if you're fat, that's healthy. Great. Be proud of the fact that you're whatever, which is no, 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 no. That's also unhealthy. Body acceptance means that you care for yourself. You, you like, this is my body. I got to care for myself, but you can also look at yourself and say, I haven't been taking care of myself. Anyway, nonetheless, I think this is really just a reflection of the fact that we're getting to the point where a majority of people are are really overweight. Mm -hmm. Once that happens, the market's going to serve them more than it will the minority, which will be people who are not overweight. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the messaging is going to be? If the majority of the people who are your consumers are overweight, your messaging is going to be, yay, it's great. You know, no responsibility. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Everybody look this way. It's just super cool. You're totally healthy. It's, it's, a, it's a myth that it's unhealthy to be obese or whatever. 
I think that's what that's that's what's going on. Yeah. Well, no, one hundred percent. It's all about the, all these companies care about is making money. All of mm-hmm. them. So all the all the virtue signaling that you see going on at the end of the day, it's so they can make more money. They don't really give a shit. But it, was there anything that he said that you disagree with, or were you like a hundred percent aligned with what he said? Was it funny, or was was he like trying to like grandstand and like, it wasn't like very? I mean, I mean, uh, he it was had, pointed. Cause yeah, he, yeah, because it was he very usually, pointed. Yeah, with his opening monologues, he'll try and like throw jokes in there. And make I mean, he did right. Point. He threw little subtle jabs or jokes in there, but. It was pretty serious. So it was a, I mean, set- it's a serious conversation, right? That a lot of not a lot of people are having, especially yeah. on that side. Well, he's been getting heat for it because he's been kind of talking against it. So it's probably just like you know, he's he's at that level now where he's like, this is like out of control. Well, it was seven minutes, a seven minute you know monologue or whatever, and where he's going off. The the, the issue I have, which I, I get it, is that it's a very complex issue. Mm-hmm. He made it all about. And there's truth in what he's saying, okay? But it's way more complex, he obviously. He it down we, to, like, we, eating less. Yeah, yeah, he puts it all yeah. like, hey, it's your responsibility. You eat too much. You don't move enough. Yeah. That's true, but there's way more to it than that. Um, and there's other forces at play, and it's sure. way more challenging. And it's all. It's not just, you know, as easy as, like— Oh, he was calling out America for celebrating it. That's really that's that's, that's what, what I really want. Yeah, yeah okay. like he he's calling out America for like that. like hey it, you know you're overweight you're overweight it is what it is type of deal but like where where are we going now where we're starting to celebrate this like it's a it's a positive thing it's like no it's a, you can be positive about who you are at the same time too to Sal's point recognize you're not taking care of your health and like this idea of all of us celebrating this is is dangerous totally mm-hmm. I mean with the direction that we're going it's getting worse and worse yeah, so he's susceptible to, to get sick. Yeah. Well, he uses the line. he uses the example of like when you know when he used to smoke. Like it's not like his friends were going up to him and be like, "Yeah, man, that's so awesome that you yeah. smoke. It's so good for you. You should yeah. keep doing that." You yeah. know, they'll be like, "Yeah, whatever. You smoke, you smoke." And then if you ask them, they'll be like, "Nah, it's not good for you, bro. You're gonna give yourself cancer." You know, it's that honesty. Yeah. Um, that it's that we seem to be moving it's lacking. Yeah. We seem days. to be moving further and further away. Speaking of which, I don't want to go crazy here. So, but uh, I do got to say this: article comes out that says, "Hey." All of you women that have been saying that you've been getting changes to your menstrual cycle from the COVID vaccine, turns out, yeah, that that definitely can happen. There's oh, definitely we, we now. I have, saw your tweet. Where, okay, so now how did this come out? Because it's always like, what's acceptable information now? Like from which publication where people are actually going to be like, oh, I'm listening now. Well, it's so this, so now they have evidence. They have studies, right, that are yeah. showing that it, it, this is a you know quote unquote side effect, and I get that. Here's the part that annoys the shit out of me, and I hope people are just as annoyed as I am. I remember, by the way, it's not because I have a good memory. This was like last year. I remember when women, by the, I mean, this was a big thing. Women Mm -hmm. everywhere were like, hey, I got the shot, and I didn't get a period for six months, or I got super heavy bleeding for this many weeks. Everybody was crying. Correlation, correlation. And they shut them down. I I know people that got kicked off social media who were wellness, you know, um, influencers who got kicked off for saying that. Just for saying, hey, this happened to me. Mm-hmm. That's the part that pisses me off. So they got not that they didn't just get silenced, they got hammered, and now they're coming out being like, hey, this is so what happens now, and this is what I, I okay, so I'm gonna take this back to when we were trainers. Do you guys remember making this mistake as a trainer, as a new trainer, where you would promise the world to a client? Yeah. Oh yeah, you lose 30 pounds. Oh yeah, it's gonna be and then what did you quickly learn? Yeah. <laughs> like don't do that because if yeah. you don't deliver Set up for failure. Totally, right? What they did is they set everybody up for terrible failure. Because now as this stuff comes out, you're going to get a bunch of people. Now we're going to believe all kinds of stuff or not know what to believe. Uh, you know, And if there is an emergency again it's or something happens. the untested great hope right? yeah, that everybody dude. was buying into. So What they should have said was, it's new. We don't know. This could very well be a thing. We're yeah, but the, the, the argument would be that they would no one would do it if that was the case. That's why. They, they needed that's exactly to, why. Yeah, I mean, that's, the, that's what they would argue. But now look what's happening. So, yeah, I know. Now that now they've set themselves but somebody, up. Somebody, somebody that's radical on that side. That's what they would say. Like, we needed to get it to everybody, and if we would have disclosed all that, then no one would have done it. We'd be worse, and then there'd be ten times more deaths would have happened from it. That's what you're going to hear. I know. So yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. I know. Just I know. Get rid I, of all the other treatments. I don't like that though. I think honesty is the best policy. Always. Always. It always works out better. 
and setting yourself up that way. <laughs> that's never been the policy <laughs> politics. Dude, You're right. Uh, honesty. <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> let me think back to a what time. World you, what world are you living in, guy? <laughs> Hold on. Let me think yeah. when, back to a time. I mean, it was more it, believable in certain periods. Uh, so, you know, it did a better never, job, I think. Yeah. How are you doing after your uh, fucking nine hour drive home? Bro, I heard huh? about I'm that. I'm still just like, uh, am I here? Am I like, did I make it? So, uh, what happened? I was driving back from Reno. Like, we went up for Hot August Nights and, um, I uh, was up there to hang out with my dad who brought his car. And so I got to drive it and all this cool stuff. And we were checking out all these cool classic cars. What car did he have? What was it? It was 56 Bel Air. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, and he just got this like rebuilt uh, 350 in there. And it was like, you know, it's, it, and it gets on. It's, it's, it's fun car. But um, so I'll get into that kind of story in a minute. But like me coming back, they shut the road down. Like they, some crash happened and I guess like they just like decided to shut down 80. So I had to go through all these back roads and it ended up taking a four hour drive ended up taking like seven hours. Oh. So I did just either one of you look into that my way back. Katrina asked me and I it think just it, happened. I think, yeah, but normally when they shut the freeway, there's normally a death. That's normally what happens oh. when it gets like completely shut off like that. I didn't, I didn't, she asked me that. I'm like, you know what? You're right. Like normally when they close the, the whole road down completely like that, a lot of times it's because there's, yeah, that could have been the case. Was it you and the kids? Yeah, me and the kids, and so I was driving a rental car. So let me, now let me go back and, and kind of rewind. Uh, so my dad wasn't feeling too great, and he had been up there before, and so he was like congested, and he thought it was like all his allergies, all this stuff, and was realizing like, oh no, like this is like I'm just not getting over this, and so I was like, I gotta go. It pains me to do it because he was waiting for us to get up there with the kids so he could like cruise with them and do all this stuff, and so he's like. I'm going to leave today. I'm like, ah, oh, such a bummer. He's like, well, you know, I can leave you the car and you guys can go cruise. I have it. It's all registered. You guys can get into all these events and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, him and then Han. And I'm like, oh yeah, let's do that. You know, and he comes in, he, he drops the car off at our house and then like takes, takes the Tahoe and like, you know, takes off. And when I saw him leave, I was just like, I had that feeling, you know, like, Oh no, I think I made a mistake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure enough, because it's an old car, dude. They have so many like quirky issues and things. You're like, gonna drive hold on, you're gonna drive yes. the classic car from yes. Reno down. His to dad Sanders? drove it up like that. I thought that was crazy. He should have trailered it. I don't know. That's the only reason why dude. I didn't have mine was because my truck was in the shop. So my truck's been in the shop for the last two and a half weeks for some stupid part they haven't got back. So I had planned this whole, I like just to meet Justin up there for Hot Dogs Nights. I'm so excited. I'm like, awesome. I'm going to trailer the Camaro up there. We're going to cruise around. It's going to be great. And then all of a sudden, I keep getting these messages saying that, oh, your part's still not in your part's not in. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, my truck is still not done. It's supposed to be this stupid little part for the transmission. Still didn't get it in. But that's why I didn't bring mine because there's yeah. no way. And mine technically could drive that distance, but I just would, would not. Why take roll that. the dice, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. It was it. Yeah, semi flipped over on its side, blocked the entire oh, freeway. Oh, yeah, look at that. Ooh, well, that makes well, a lot legit. of sense, dude. Yeah. Wow. Minor injuries, though. Oh, minor, but, but still, it's a big ass semi. Wow, yeah. wow, look at that. That's crazy. Okay, so All so right. you were gonna drive? Was it fifty six? <laughs> yeah, Bel Air. Yeah, from Reno to Santa Cruz. Okay, so yeah, four and a half five hour drive. Okay, not traffic. You know, just you know, just. Uh, like a risk, you know, yeah. Let's just say, like, <laughs> so what it, it might work. It might work out. So I, okay. So I took it down to cruise, and I was going to meet up with you know with Adam and you know and Doug was coming uh, out there with us too with Bree and everybody, and um, we were just going to go show the kids like what it's all about because there's just cars everywhere, dude. It's a big party. It's actually a whole lot of fun. Um, but I get off the freeway, and the car wasn't was was doing fine. And, you know, all the temperatures, everything was good. Like, uh, it was, uh, the engine was running good. And so we started idling on the road and I didn't, I didn't really realize like how much the, the water temperature was starting to creep on me until it was like at like 180, something like, you know, 190. And then we started to kind of go real slow, like grinding through the, um, the way that they have it all kind of marked off in the parking mm -hmm. lot. Everybody's kind of uh, fenced on the side, like cheering for you and stuff. And so I'm like going real slow and it's like idling and it just started going up, 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 up. And then I, I finally made it to a spot where there was an open spot next to these two other guys that had like a Chevelle and a, um, you know, GTO. 
And so I was like, oh, perfect. I'm going to back in here. And I started to back in. And then I I parked it. And then <laughs> oh. it was covered like, 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 a, like a wizard just was like. Whoosh, <laughs> and just, yeah, steam everywhere. And <laughs> I get out. And I'm like, oh, no, it's so embarrassing, dude. It's like you're going into a car show where everybody's looking at it and like, ooh, and it's like, shh. Yeah. <laughs> like, you fucking amateur. Like, what? like, you don't even know how to look at a water gauge. You know? <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I sabotage. And so I'm like, I can't open it because if you open it, you know, you'll burn the hell yeah. out of your hand. And so I'm just like, I... Pfft. Like I'm gonna go look at cars and just leave it. <laughs> car smoky. Just, just let it steam. Smoke. Just, and, and this, the worst is there's hey, hey, there's all these other gear yeah, heads. Tons, they of, come no, you, like, tons hey, of know it all. Yeah, let me help dude. you out real quick, buddy. You obviously you have no idea, dude. I had like old guy after old guy, like you know that that had like I have a fifty. So I have you know a three fifty. Let me you know you you really fucked your engine up. No, no. Like, <laughs> like throwing me all the worst case scenarios. And like, Bro, I don't want to hear all this stuff right now. Like you piss off, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go walk and cool down myself. Um, and <laughs> it was the worst, dude. And so I'm like trying to be cool because I want the kids to have a good time so we could come back again at some point, right? Uh, and so anyway, thank God I was like crossing my fingers. Uh, it wasn't too bad. What happened was like the reserve, it had popped. It got so hot that it like popped the, the, the cap off. Oh. And so the cap came off and then all of that just steamed out. Um but uh, it's because, and so why this wasn't my fault. It um, it had like a switch on there for a manual fan that I had turned on, but the fan never turned on because the fan like died. And so the fan that's supposed to keep the the radiator cool in front of it had just stopped working. Oh, okay. And so uh, so that's where I was. It's a flux capacitor. It's a flux capacitor <laughs> that uh, hey, you they, had to turn. Bro, like, I would you know, have a couple been so screwed. Rotations because I don't know anything. That's me. That's why I would. Even, that's why I don't take that risk. I'm like I would trailer it out there. That's the only way. I would you know do. what's yeah. crazy is that we take for granted uh, how reliable modern cars are. Oh, you almost yeah. never see a car broken down on the side of the road. That was always that was a common thing. And it's funny. And Courtney's asking me about that. I'm like, yeah, this always happens. Like it, with everybody's car here that you see, like they're dealing with this shit. They just know how to like, you know, fine tune things constantly. And they bring a whole toolbox with them in the back trunk, you yeah. know, just to fix all these little nuances. You guys have to trailer it back. So I, because it's, it still could run on the freeway because it gets enough airflow. Oh, that makes it, sense. it stayed down. So I just waited until it got like completely cool. And even leaving out, like it started to kind of come up because I had to like, and so I, I skipped. There was like a, a fence and I had um, Doug just jumped out and like moved it out. So I didn't have to go through and weave through everybody. And everybody's like, oh, I'm like, I'm out of here, dude. I got to get to the freeway, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like jetted to the freeway. And uh, thankfully my my dad's, friend that he was up there and he was helpful with me they ended up following us um to see if i was going to break down or not uh all the way back to our trucky place so um it's parked it, up there it, it was just a little stressful yeah <laughs> oh my <laughs> just god just a little bit and then to add on to that like the seven hour drive back like i couldn't even get home it, it was just kind of a disaster dude like it's just one of those things you plan all these cool things to happen all in like sequence and then it just like one thing happens and it's like <laughs> bro being a parent is basically yeah. managing like, don't lose your audibles. shit yes that's all yeah. i was saying like a mantra in my head don't yes because i you know i'd go on trips with my parents and i remember sometimes my dad would lose his shit I'm like why is he so mad <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i had no idea that there was yeah. a bunch of stuff that happened i was, I was up here dude like this is being a dad that's <laughs> happened yeah like or my mom boiling. You know, i remember one time my mom i was a kid i'm watching like tv and i was just kind of chilling on the couch like 12 years old and, and we we had magazines you know on the t on the t on the coffee table and there was like four on the coffee table, three on the floor, one over there. And she's as she's cleaning it up, she just lost her shit. Literally lost her shit and started throwing magazines everywhere. <laughs> and I remember as a kid being like, I thought to myself this. Yeah. I said, man, my mom, you know. There's a lot of things that led up to And that. I literally said to her, which made it worse, I, after she like freaked out, I said, mom, I said, you, you need to calm down. You can't be like crazy like that, you know? And then she like really got mad. <laughs> and I didn't understand. And I remember she- always goes over well. Oh, bro. Did, never say that to anybody, especially a mom. And I remember she told me this. She said later on at night or whatever, she goes, you'll understand when you're a parent. You know, every parent says that yeah, to your kids. Yeah. You're like, whatever, <laughs> mom, you're crazy. I get it now. Have you, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen that? Yeah. It's a. It's either a meme or I've seen this post before where it's like a, a couples and they're driving like on vacation, 
and you could just see both of them are staring ahead of time. It's like pretending pretending you're gonna have a great vacation. Yeah, yeah. You just got into a, almost a divorce fight on packing the car to go on vacation. <laughs> it's like everybody can relate to that, right? Yeah, you're getting wow. ready to go for the weekend. It's gonna be this great trip and everything like that. Like, the maybe stress will get better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the stress <laughs> and then the, the drive. You know what I'm saying? Like six hours, like staring, no one talking to Whoa. each other. At ri- look, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Dude. I'll tell you guys. This it's gonna be a great weekend. It's I'll tell you a little bit about uh, my my weekend at risk of communicating it wrong and just flaming <laughs> the shit. Do you dare? <laughs> so, honey, if you're listening to this, please forgive me if I don't tell this properly, okay? But so so we, she's pregnant, right? She's in her third, she's about to get in her third trimester. Shitty sleep all the time, no matter what. Just oh, yeah. really bad sleep. Good job setting the table here. On top of it, uh, I wake up early because I, I go to the gym. So that wakes her up. Mm-hmm. If I get up to go pee, that'll wake her up. And then it's hard for her to go back to sleep. Then, you know, the kids get ready for school yeah. and just, you know, the baby. So she just snore. Yeah. Uh, yeah snoring, which yeah. now I think I've solved or whatever, but okay. there's just bad sleep. Okay. Yeah. Now, on top of it, my daughter has been like begging us to have a cat, or, like a pet. We need a cat. We need to please get me a cat, whatever. Uh-huh. So out of the goodness of her heart, and this is true, Jessica doesn't like cats, but she's like, I'm going to do this for, for your daughter. So we got a kitten. Okay. Mm. Well, kittens... Uh, meow like crazy at night, in the middle of the night, if they're not with you or whatever. So, to tell so you that. this bro, <laughs> you know, every time when he tells stories <laughs> yeah, like this, I, I always that that image yeah. that we have of him that's a big brain yeah. and like all the workers are working over here on all the science studies and stuff that he reads. And, and it's just the other like ones are just common sense over yeah, here, yeah, just yeah. empty. Nobody's oh, there. Bro. Nobody's there for common sense, dude. <laughs> you got all this shit going on, and you're like, hey, let's add an animal, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, fucking, dude, dude. a kitten or a puppy. Well, just, anyway, so it's so like, meow meow meow. So the cat, yeah, just meowing, right? And and. She, if if you made the slightest move, it would meow like crazy. Wake up my wife. Wake up the baby. Then it's like terrible, right? So that's been that was happening all week, and that causes tension. Uh, and I'm not always the most self aware person. That causes more tension. So just fights, right? Fights, 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 fights. Trying to work it out, whatever. Anyways, this this, this weekend we were, you know, we're hanging out, and you know, I I'm on the couch. I doze off a little bit. Wake up. Our lunch is ready. Jessica's do- dozed off, which like it's never, it almost never happens. So we go get the food. We're getting the food. My daughter's order's wrong. So she's like, oh my God. And she kind of like real loud wakes up Jessica. And that was it. Dude. She, she just got so upset, bro. And so it was this big thing. And I'm like, <laughs> and I felt so bad, you know, because I'm like, I'm just not a self, like I'm not aware of certain things to that extent. Mm. So she's just so mad and so i'm like oh i'm so sorry so which is kind of weird because so actually, last night i'm like mis- i'm like massaging her i'm like okay every night we're gonna we're gonna go to bed early like we got to get you more sleep and, and we're gonna try and make this happen right oh man i actually think you're a really <laughs> empathetic person maybe like maybe you lack the social awareness part but you you're very you're very empathetic i feel like yeah i am the most out of all of us. I, yeah, I, I, I i don't yeah i don't think i'm not empathetic what it is is i'm um i don't know for, for, is forgetful even the word to describe kind of scatterbrained Oblivious. or oh, no. social awareness is what just you're not, alluding to right now yeah just maybe not <laughs> what We're just the social awareness is what you're <laughs> a, a, alluding to right you're now right about social awareness. <laughs> <laughs> your surroundings you know what I'm saying? like what's going on <laughs> yeah well Empty i'll headed. save you a little bit since yeah. we're ragging on wife so i'll go ahead and i'm gonna roll mine under the bus because i wasn't ragging on my wife so, yeah, stop yeah. it adam <laughs> i didn't even bring mine into the yeah, mix yeah. i was like so Listen, well, no, well, here's here's the you want to go hey she asked me too she's like don't you dare talk about this i'm fucking talking about the podcast i'm gonna tell you why i'm talking about the podcast because i I was so cool about it when it happened in real time, and I thought, you know what, I'm I let it. I let it build up, and, and I didn't. Explode. Doug's gonna edit all these stories out. <laughs> Save us, by the way. It's, it's a ten minute podcast. I'm Everyone's feeling like, that. The content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in the bathroom. We're up. We're up at Reno, right? And uh, I'm in the bathroom once. I think it was Saturday morning or what like that. And so I, I should preface why I, why I was up or what caused me to be so frustrated is I don't know. This is a weird. I'm taking my son up to Hot August Nights for the first time, and I'm actually I'm one. I'm already bummed that I don't have my Camaro up there. But I'm like, you know, it's cool. My son's gonna see all these hot rods, and I'm gonna take some photos with them and do all this stuff and see him take cool pictures in front of cars. And he'll look back when he's older and stuff like that of these pictures with him hanging out in different cars. Like, that's dad stuff going in my head. Mistake right? number one: expectations. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. Already set the table. Right, yeah. right. So I'm in the bathroom. It's like it's like Friday or Saturday morning. I don't remember what morning it was. <clears throat> And I come out, and she's like, uh-oh. And I'm like, uh-oh, what? She's like, don't be mad. And I'm like, anytime she starts that, <laughs> I'm already mad. Yeah. She just started that. <laughs> like, start with don't be mad, you know? Yeah. I'm like, what happened? She's like, I decided to cut Max's hair. I'm like, 
why the fuck would you do that? And why would you do that right now? And why would you not ask me to do that since I cut his hair last time, right? So I did the whole Peaky Blinder thing on him last time. Yeah. That turned out all right, right? Yeah, I mean, wasn't bad. I actually got some compliments from it. I'm like, eh, it was all right. I didn't yeah. think it was great. I wouldn't try and do it again. Yeah. And she's like, his bangs are just driving me crazy. So I cut his bangs. I walk out there. Bro, you couldn't intentionally <laughs> fuck his hair up worse. <laughs> You couldn't have tried what? to fuck his hair up worse. Why? What happened? Bro, she <laughs> she cut his bangs and she cut it in a straight line. You can't cut bangs like straight. So it's like <laughs> squared off here so and then long. Oh, long so he, look, he looks like the it. Queen's Gambit. You, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling, I'll show a picture of it. I'll show a picture of it. Oh, and man. you you literally could not have messed it up more. It was that bad. So I, poor Vicky has her, you know, hands cut out for her today or tomorrow whenever she so sees So you took him to the hot house nights? And yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, it's, it's, so I mean, I was... And I did I did not get mad. I was cool about it and I was just whatever inside. And, and she's just like, she's like, you know, I appreciate you really. I feel already bad, really bad. So with that, thanks for not being so angry about it. So that I'm like, no, it's okay. Just when, when our son asked us if we ever took him to hot, it's nice. And there's no photos to prove that he was there. So <laughs> you can explain to him why. This, this so is what mean. happened. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's so reverse. Yeah. Usually, it's the dad that does some shit like that. Like, yeah. I, I decided to shave the kid's head, yeah. right? You know, yeah, or yeah, like yeah. That. well, Katrina and I have like a relationship like that. There's a lot of things that are reverse in our relationship, and that uh, you're right. That's probably normally the dad who does something silly like that. Well, no, not not in our situation. Katrina oh, did something man. like that. So. I saw some pictures. It's all right. Oh no, it's weird. <laughs> he's young. You know she, what I mean? So it's cute. Well, oh, you know. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? She asked him. She's like, uh, "Honey, I'm so sorry. Mommy messed up your hair." It's okay, mommy. Oh. It's like, oh. And I was like, you know what? I, the positive thing, that's what I said. I said, you know, at least you did it at this age when he's not going to be traumatized by it. No, Bro. <laughs> he had to go to school. You know what I'm saying? And then like hey. kids, hey. kids are ruthless. My you know? oldest, yeah. my oldest, who's 17 now, this is like last year. So this is like, the, this is like prime age. Don't get your kid's hair fucked up, right? Yeah. I took him to Supercuts. <laughs> Like, we got to get your haircut, bro. You got to mop That's on your- of the story right there. <laughs> hey. I took him to Supercut. Oh, he looks all right. Yeah. <laughs> I so I took I took yeah. him to Supercut. You guys remember that lady I told you about that for, I don't know how we always get her. She's the old lady that has- She's uh, like a lazy eye. It's not lazy. Yeah. They literally, <laughs> hey, listen. Just, bro, always always Sal would take his like, teenage boy yeah. to get his haircut. Kind of I've seen that's it. cross eyed. Hey, pay for yeah, your own haircut. Cuts. I pay for your haircut. You go where I tell you. There's a reason why it's $9. It's $5. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Doug, like, what's, no, that, what's that lizard with eyes going opposite direction? Is that, what is that called? Is it a chameleon? Chameleon? Is. Is it a chameleon? <laughs> okay, that's what eyes do. They don't cross, they go like this, right? So she's got, so she gets to cut his hair. Right there. I'm like, I'm walking out. I'm like, oh, shit. No. But no, I'm, 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 you know, it's like, we I'll try to save a buck. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, here you go, bro. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> no, it's just fast. So we go, we get the haircut. Now she literally does not listen. So my son will be like, I could tell, I can hear him. I can see him telling her what to do. Don't go shorter than this. What does she do? Shorter than that. Don't. Yep. So yep. sure enough, we're done. He's silent. Dude, he was mad for probably three, four days. Ugh. Mad, dude. So mad. That's one of the worst feelings when you deliberately, uh, and then you're telling them exactly what you want, and like yeah. you see them messing up real time. Yeah, and you have you have no control. Now keep in mind, this was maybe it was longer than a year ago. This is when they were doing school at Zoom, you know, yeah. through Zoom. So I'm like, bro, we care. You're not even going to school. I can see anybody anyway. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> and then you make it worse. It's no yeah. big deal. No, we care. No deal. <laughs> Shave it off, dude. It's always was, an option. He was so bad though. Yeah. Oh, oh dude. Speaking of like uh, old, uh, like so. Okay, let me sit. Like so. Zuckerberg had like, uh, I guess like somebody had found an old baseball card of his. So he back in the day went to some like camp and had created his own baseball card with his own made up stats. And he was like, I don't know if he's like 12 years old or something, or if he's like younger than that, but he, somebody had found it that he gave it to and is now auctioning it off on like eBay. And they're going to see how much money they're going to raise for it. So does he, does he look like, a, does he look like an Android up. back yeah, then can too? I see that? Can I yeah, see the because who makes themselves their own baseball card who doesn't even like play or is like known for that or anything? Uh, I, know I mean, somebody, 12? I know, some, I don't I know somebody who just I used did to, that. I used I to put. I know just did it. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, dude, he's on. He's Instagram guy. I actually like his stuff. I just oh, he's a little kid. I feel bad making fun of him. Look at that cute kid. No way, dude. Like future future billionaire Android right there. <laughs> oh, he's a cute kid. Poor kid. He wanted to be. You know, he wanted to be an athlete. He, wanted, uh, he became be a billionaire cool. instead. What are you gonna do? Yeah, gonna turn into an NFT. Is it? Was it? Uh, but I mean, like they're selling bids it now. on it. Yet? Like it's like. Yeah. Yeah, like, is there any bids on it? I want to know how much it's going to go for. I don't know. I, wanna, gonna I wonder how much it. money he's going to no, get for what that. The f hey, how cool would it be to have that in here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, look, I don't I know. I mean, as a joke, it would be funny. I right? used to take, I used to take the the <laughs> the you know the, the, my dad's garage rags. I put yeah. it in back of my shirt. Boom, I'm a superhero. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing, right? Well, yeah. yeah. Just give myself a ward for something I I don't even do. <laughs> you know, like know. just just do that, right? Just give yourself a trophy. He was eight yeah. years old. Come on, how old was he? He was eight. Oh, okay, what a meat. Justin's hey, such a bully. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> There's, he's making a ton of money off of that, so I have to make fun. Is he making the money off of it? No, some other guy is, but I'm just okay. saying that's weird. I want, yeah, I want to see. <laughs> it's what weird it, that anybody would want it. I guess is the point. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's. I mean, I, I'm with Sal. It's not sold yet. I don't. Think. I would buy as a joke, but I wouldn't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, on it. X- Ten million. Oh no, no, that's it's, min- uh, Mickey Mantle. No, no, no. Look. Zuckerberg baseball card expected to fetch 10. Oh, no, no, oh, no, no. Oh, oh, sorry. You got to keep reading. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Let's skip words. <laughs> <That was yours. laughs> I don't think it's been sold yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, anyway. we'll find out, I guess. We'll see if anybody does want it. Hey, not. you know what's going mainstream, by the way? I got to bring this up. Like mm-hmm. mainstream, mainstream. So you guys are familiar with Glamour Magazine, right? Yeah. I mean, you guys, <laughs> of course. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> right away. Subscription. Yeah. Subscription. Glamour. I love Glamour. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they did this huge article on red light therapy. Huge article. Oh, really? Calling it the Fountain of Youth. So, I mean, it's going. Oh, I think I did see that. Yeah, Jackie shared it with okay, us. Okay, yeah, shout awesome. out to Jackie. She just yeah. sends us the best articles. Uh, it's it's going mainstream, and then in the article they quote all the studies. I was actually proud of Glamour, which is normally <laughs> a terrible magazine full of garbage. I don't think I've ever hear you say something. Like that. I know, <coughs> but I know you guys are gonna beat me up afterwards. Yeah. But it, it, it they talked about the studies and how it works. <laughs> And it, it, look, for people reading it, it was it, you're probably going to get the same feeling I got when we started talking to the company we work with, Juve. They, when they brought to us, here's what red light therapy does. I, you guys remember what I said? Bullshit. Doesn't do all that. No way. The studies go way back, dude. Yeah. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of studies that show uh, its benefits. Speaking of which, we did that podcast with Max where he talked about the – Alzheimer's research and how, you know, that 2000, I think it was six study mm. that, that confirmed, I put in quotations that the amyloid beta plaques are the cause of the symptoms. Now they're showing was fraudulent. Anyway, he mentioned on that podcast, the mitochondrial dysfunction theory, which I personally think is, that's my belief. I think that's the, that's the direction that we need to go is poor mitochondrial health. Well, red light therapy, that's how it works. It literally stimulates the mitochondria to produce more beneficial energy, to become more efficient. And uh, this is why when you shine red light on your skin, your skin <clears throat> rejuvenates and gets healthier faster or why you re- recover faster. It's, it, what it does is it literally, it's like giving your mitochondria you know, super fuel, if you will. So is that why, too, they're finding all these other benefits because of all the different types of cells in your body that, you know, it affects? They all, through, requ- they yeah, all, they require, all require through mitochondria. All so of benefit them. Benefit everything. That's right. So if you shine it on your skin, better skin uh, health. If you shine it on, this is no joke, testicles. That's why it seems magical. Though, higher testosterone. Right? What do you think it's going to be? Like, like red light therapy is going to become like the new CBD where it's like good for everything? Oh, that's a good one. Probably right? Just shine some light on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I don't well, know. Well, I mean, because it has because it has such positive benefits, and everything is connected to that. It's just like uh, you could probably draw context some sort matters, of- right? Context matters. Are there cases where you may not want to superpower your mitochondria? I, I would imagine uh, in a cancerous state, or yeah, something? yeah, maybe in your like a really sick. It depends, right? That's what I would imagine. <laughs> uh, but uh, but you're right. I, I mean, there are studies that show that it improves cognitive function. Um, by getting it to parts of the brain, which I don't, you can't do that with traditional red light therapy because of your skull. Mm-hmm. Although some people try doing it through the nose, I don't think that works or whatever. Shout out to my Oh, Green I've Field. seen that before. Yeah. Oh. You been, know, speaking of articles that uh, J- Jackie sent over, she also sent one. Did you see the McDonald's and uh, Beyond Meat? Beyond Meat's tanking. Yeah. God, if only Everything somebody predicted that. that you know? You're creating a product that's trying to copy as close as it possibly can another product. Mm-hmm. So it's trying to be identical. What are the benefits of it? Well, first off, there are none. It's got a million yeah. ingredients to one. So it's ground beef versus this engineered food. Number two, the macros were identical. You, it, yeah, of course it's going to tank. Come on, man. Yeah. It's not only is it, all it is is plant. That's the only difference. It is not healthier. It doesn't have less calories. It does, and It's worse for you because yeah. it's 50 million different ingredients that are put together and engineered to taste like meat. Of course it's going to tank. Of course. The only people that are going to stick to it or eat it are people who are super anti animals getting killed. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, the average Even person. Even then, though, you've brought up the point that I think is like crazy to me is 
you're you're eating something that is like this thing that you're so opposed to eating and it's and they they've engineered it to Isn't that weird though? Yeah. That is weird. I mean, it's like think about that for a second. It'd be well, like if you're super not into eating humans and you ate you and had something engineered to taste yeah. and feel like you're eating human you're flesh. Right. But it's yes, I know. Yeah. It's like that's to me. That's what it. It, it, seems it doesn't like. make sense. Well, it makes no sense. Like yeah, if you're against them, it's like, like eating, a, it, it, it's more of a conversion, like a, like an evangelist kind of approach, right? They're trying to meet people where they they can like kind of bring them in subtly like oh you know <clears throat> plant base isn't that bad we still have burgers so my, my sister is like that. i don't know if you guys know that my sister for she's i had this aversion to meat since she was like a, a kid so she and it's because her her you know her love for animals mm. and she can't help but think that and so she's just disgusted by just sure. the texture of, the, of meat the look of it everything like that she can have fish and there's some things that she'll do but for the most part, she's not a big meat eater for that exact reason. And it's like, so if you're like this this hardcore vegan or you're just like, and it's all about the animals. Oh, yeah. The association's eat, already there. Yeah, so exactly. So to, yeah. To, to eat something like a burger that has the taste, the look. You're so you know what? I never thought of that. It's yeah. so true. It's like, listen, everybody, it's wrong to beat children. But here's some fake. But here's kids a fake children. Exactly. Be, and it's <laughs> and they're so realistic. They bleed and they die, just like real kids. But it's That's not so kids. Dark, yes. Wouldn't you be like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Weird. Yeah. yeah. Weird. What is yeah. wrong yeah. with you? That's yeah. true. Yes. If you're okay. against eating animals, you shouldn't eat things that are made to taste like animals. Yeah. Very good point, Adam. Dude. <laughs> that is a huge mind blow. Well, and maybe that's uh, why it's gonna fall. Maybe well, that's why it's gonna fall on its face because the, the the ones that really are, I would think, are like my sister, where they do. They think it's like this. You know what the key I was? wonder about these kinds contracts like how long because you know obviously they got into the fast food chain yeah. kind of market and it was a trial run for the most part it started out like mild interest right mm -hmm. and but i wonder if that's just like after like it's that contract starting to come up and and it's going to be like one chain after the next of course get rid of them you know what was the what was the price point can you pull that up doug what what was the what do you mean, their stock no, no 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 the price point at mcdonald's so like because I think I, it was the same it was the exact like could you get a big mac at, at that was beyond burger big mac versus regular one and it was exact same price oh that's a good because question. that could make a big difference too right so like if if they were charging a premium because of all the stuff that goes into it it's more expensive to potentially produce that it might have been really expensive and so you know at the end of the day people are trying to save money and that's why you go a lot of people go to some of these fast food restaurants and so you're like i'm not gonna pay an extra dollar now, it'd be for interesting it. for me to see if like some companies like hold <clears throat> true like it's like a a, a cause that they're, they're they're keeping that around instead of listening to the market demand no right no dude they don't care not well the business to make it listen, happen, I, I would believe you if i didn't see that happening in all other industries listen here's the deal okay <clears throat> well i mean here's what a company's job i is. mean they will if they're like an all vegan place i mean come on they, sure yeah, but they'll. that's their market i don't know they're, yeah but okay okay look at uh, make plant remarkably smaller than the impossible whopper but it was a uh, mere three dollars although I, what? I don't understand what they're saying it so was, uh, a the McPlant meal is nine dollars and 19 cents with fries and a drink okay is, is that that's more than I don't know. I don't. Well, that was what you're supposed to be looking for me. Doug. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you brought more useless information to the conversation. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it needed more. Like we know the automatic price. Well, that's. <laughs> well, I know you, you go to McDonald's well, all the time. So I, I think it was more. Yeah, see that. So maybe that, more. that to me, that I'm sure that played a role, right? You got to think, especially the times that we're in right yeah, now. It's with, more expensive. Listen, yeah, a no. company's <clears throat> job should be. To, to give the consumer what they want. That means it's our responsibility. It should be. That's the goal. So if a, job, a company's doing something you don't like, blame the consumer, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you, don't, you shouldn't lie, cheat, steal, hurt, kill, that kind of stuff. But that's just, that's just, how, that's just how it works. So these companies don't give a shit yeah. at all. If they're not selling them, they're not selling them. Yeah, yeah. And that's the bottom yeah. line. You know what made these, these patties popular in the first place? Was that they figured out a way to make them bleed juicy? Like, yeah, like, like, yeah, meat. like it was so. Like back leak. to your point, Adam. Yeah, they're like, oh, this one's even more like. Is the beat? Yeah, they added in so it like looked like it was blood. <clears throat> Does that say the Big Mac meal is five ninety nine? So it's well, that was a whopper. You were at, you were at Burger King before. No, no, no. McPlant was like nine dollars and something oh, for the, really? the meal. Oh, that's so, a lot more. Yeah, it's like four dollars more. By the way, <clears throat> by the way, so that had to do. Mick broke. I, I do want to say this, not saying that this is an equivalency, but this is there is a truth here. 
a lot of animals do get killed in making these these foods. Oh, I know. That's a point that people always make. It's so weird. It's like you you have this thing for uh, you, know, yeah. you know cows and stuff like that, but then but rabbits and gophers mice and, and gophers yeah. and birds. A lot, and stuff like a lot of the them inconvenient killed. truth of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah a lot this of them is, do get killed. So it's uh, there's no perfect way to do it. We haven't figured out a way right yeah. to kill nothing uh, except for lab grown meat. Have you guys seen that they're starting to? Uh, yeah, so make this happen. See that uh, it, to me. So what? It has to come from living cells. Where are those living cells coming from? They take stem cells. And from they, what? They. Uh, that's a good question. From the animal. Yeah. <laughs> so it's still like part of the animal that they're just growing and fostering. Yeah, but I think lab, once you but- get like some, then that's it. You're done. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know this. I don't know this <laughs> science sound at all. Right. Great question. Hey, listen. Justin. Great listen, question. You reminded me of something. I'm now, just saying. now that we're talking about meat, Justin, I got a question for you. Okay. Yeah. I think I know what um, the answer is. Anything meat. I'm if here, you could buddy. get something for life, <laughs> what would it be? Bacon, of course. Bacon for life. Butcher Box is giving away bacon for life. Oh, they brought oh, it back. Dude. They brought it. They brought, yeah. it back. they brought it back. Every time they, by the Throw way, bacon on it. If you're listening to this, okay, and you were contemplating getting on, they the, run the out. Butcher- so you yes, sign this yes. shit up. Yeah. If you were contemplating getting on the Butcher Box bandwagon, now is the time to do it, and you have to do it fast because every year that they bring this back, it goes so hard that it goes ham, right? Yeah. It goes ham, and then it, ends it ain't none of that carrot bacon either. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's yeah. real yeah. bacon. Yeah. 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 Coming from pigs. Yeah. Uh, no last, one, no one caught that, Andrew, except for you. Yeah, I time. do. Would you make a joke that I missed? <laughs> yeah, oh, going oh, ham. Oh, we yes, missed thank it. you, Doug. Oh, <laughs> no, I got it. I still want. I still, still want to acknowledge. Give you a stupid. courtesy laugh at least. It's a dumb joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dad <laughs> joke. As soon as he yeah. became a dad, Justin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's that, got was a better, that was he's better. That was better than a dad joke. Come on. He's only got a few years experience. Can we shout out those guys? By the way, hey, shout out that page. I like that Instagram. page. Oh, the dad joke. Yeah, yeah. I like to give love when I find like a. I love those deadpan jokes. It's called. Uh, they're called Andrew. You know the name of that? They're up there in Tahoe, right? Yeah, I think it's called like I want Doc Talk or something like that. I love that. Is that what it's called? I, yeah. They they're hilarious though. Who else? Oh, that was the other person we're gonna shout. Jen Cohen. Oh yeah, Jen Cohen is like. Can this I just tell undercover something? badass? Like, well, what is she doing? Hold on a second. She's so impressive every time. Like what I mean by that is every time you talk to her, meet her. You're like, yeah. you did what? You do ho- how? And then. She posts, and I didn't believe. I look, I didn't fully believe you guys. You guys are freaking out over what is that called? Wind surfing or wind, yeah, kite, kite surfing, surfing. Kite wind surfing, surfing. Ki- kite boarding. Yeah. Kite boarding. You guys are like, oh, dude, she's like pro level, and I'm yeah. like, okay, so she's probably pretty good. No, 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 no. she's pro level. Yeah, yeah. like flipping and yeah. doing wild shit on a freaking board in the water. Yeah, yeah. No. she's a badass. No, dude. no, she. You yeah, know what she, she said? It was her whole video, motto is don't talk about it. Talk about what you can do. Show it. Shock well, them and then move on. That's 100% yeah. what she does. Yeah, yeah. That's why well, I said she just like works. drop that, drop that like, oh, take a look at my oh, little look, uh, me actually, hanging really out for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, she always hey, shocks. Like, X whoa. game style, bro. She's she always shocks me because she she's able to get in and communicate with and connect with people and you're just like, how did you meet that person? How did you... She just does it. Yeah. She was one of, uh, we, we've we talked before on the podcast of like, there's been times where like, oh, we almost didn't meet somebody or we're like hesitantly, like, oh, I don't know about this person. And then she completely like flipped your perspective yeah. of who she was. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when she came in, there was this grumbling sound in here of like, oh, we're going to interview this trainer girl. Who is this? Bah, 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 bah. And then we all met her and everybody fell in love with her. And then we've continued to fall in love with her the more we get to know her. That's only happened a few times. Yeah. yeah. There's only been a few times where there's been somebody who like we were really yeah. reluctant. We're pretty spot on for the most part. Yeah. I, th- I, I think so. I think so too. But every once in a while, yeah. someone just com- surprises. Yes. Yeah. She was like one of the most surprising people that we met. And I just for continue sure. to love her. She's yeah. amazing. So real quick. Quick, I want to. I, I need to hear this, Justin. Yeah, uh, the Alka Seltzer thing. Oh yeah, please explain this to yeah, me. Okay, so I believe this my whole life. And also, why you didn't wash down. your T-shirt today? Just <laughs> yeah, both bro, those things, please. I got bird poop on me. A little Wait a minute. That's no, what you said this earlier. from dude. Hold I was brushing my teeth. Okay. Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold a little on. bit of suds came out of my mouth, face? and it landed no, right here, face. dude. I, your, early, your theories are garbage, earlier. It was like this, though. It was like yeah. you know, I don't know. Crusty. Okay, I know what you guys are trying to imply, dude. It was not crusty. Hold on a second. Did you forget to bring your shirt and you had to grab one out of the back of the car? Be honest. No. Yeah. No, this was fresh. It took it right off. Really? You know, my, yeah. All right. Let me, can I smell I, it? I messed it up. Let me smell <laughs> it. I'll tell you. You want to smell it? No, I don't. No, I don't want to smell so, it. But I feel like I think. Yeah. All right, it's toothpaste. All right, what am I talking about? Oh, Alka yeah, Alka Seltzer. Right. So. I was um, I was explaining things to Everett like before I I you know help help him get ready for bed. A lot of times he just like finds it like 
opportune time to ask me like all these crazy questions. <laughs> deep questions and stuff. Really deep questions, right? And one of them was like, so I don't know how it got brought up. But, oh, we were talking about like acid reflux and stuff because he's already kind of has signs that he's going through oh. like, you know, a bit of acid reflux. And I said, there'd be times where um, I, I was at a, my friend's house and I stayed the night and they didn't have like Tums. They didn't have anything to help. And I'd be like, dying. I was like burning. And so I would go down to the kitchen and I'd find like baking soda and I'd put like a teaspoon in water oh, and like stir it. And, yeah. and then, but, but it'd make me burp like crazy and all this stuff. And then I, I don't know, somehow that got into talking about seagulls and, and Alka-Seltzer. And I was like, I vividly like remember, I felt like I remembered seeing somebody do this down at the the beach and i was like duh like it's so cruel like it threw up like some alka seltzer and i thought that yeah, they die or they explode they that was die or they explode like their stomach explodes everybody knows that right but apparently i don't know if mythbusters have done anything to this or not but i read a bunch of articles after this and went down a rabbit's hole like of videos and youtube and they're like the scientists are like no like it's be the theory is because they're not able to um, get rid of it through gas, through through farts or burps, right? Like they don't do that. But in pressure, in terms of like their ability to do it, they said that they have the ability to do it. They just don't do it because of their diet. So typically, they don't like fart or burp or exchange gas. My whole childhood was a lie because they can. But so they have the ability to do it. So it's like, it, it'll, it'll probably mess up <laughs> their stomach and, and they're going to have to like work through all that gas and stuff that, that comes about, but so, won't so it doesn't, them. it doesn't blow them up. You yeah. know what? Sure. Fire where I was shit all over the so place. And here's the worst part is we're watching videos waiting, you know, for these seagulls. I'm just like, I've never seen this happen. I'm going to be honest. And like, like. Everett was like, I don't want to watch this dad. I'm like, I don't either. <laughs> I don't want to watch you either, but this I just want to see if it's true. And we're like scrolling, waiting, and this guy did it. I'm like, oh no, it's going to happen. You know? <laughs> and then the seagulls is like, you know, suffering. It's on the ground, but then it's fine. And it like flies off. And I'm like, oh shit, it's okay. Everything's okay. You know what, dude? Oh my God. This just, the internet disaster. ruins everything. This was true in my it's, head. This is true. Right? You know, back in the day, if you didn't know something, you would ask your aunt and then she'd tell you. And that was it. I was the truth yeah. for the rest of your life. Now we got the damn internet. I had to see if it was visually like I had to get proof, you know? Uh, so I, I, I stuck it out. What else is not true? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost everything. Yeah, blowing in the Nintendo cartridge doesn't make it work. I still I believe that. I don't, yeah. That's true. I'm telling you, Somebody they did. They actually that. did tests on it. Uh, and it doesn't <laughs> work. I know. That's bullshit. That's <laughs> fake news. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So we got even worse, though. Like it got, actually, we'll cut it there. Fuck it. <laughs> Hey, real quick, uh, one of the sponsors we've worked with the longest is Organifi, and that's for a reason. This company is incredible. High-quality ingredients, convenience, great tasting. Uh, these are superfood blends that are like a green juice, there's a red juice, there's a gold juice. They have plant-based protein powder. It's one of the ones I use because I can't have dairy, and much more. Lots of incredible products. This company continues to grow because their customers are so satisfied. If you take supplements and you want the best, Check this company out. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-I, uh, sorry, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump and get 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First caller is Lucas from Oklahoma. Lucas, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Good. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call. I really, uh, really appreciate it. I've been a listener for... Uh, going on about four years now. Oh, so, yeah. uh, good deal. Uh, first time, first time I've sent you guys a question. I appreciate you hearing me. Um, so some brief background. Um, I'm 33 years old. Uh, I've been lifting weights since I was 15. Um, with a power lifting background until I was about uh, 20 to 21. Um, once I stopped doing that, I started doing just a, uh, just like a normal traditional, uh, two part body two uh, body parts split six days a week. I've been doing that for basically the last 10 years, pretty, pretty much my own programming. Um, I've never done any full body workouts before. Uh, that is until I started maps aesthetic, um, about eight weeks ago. Um, so I, 
I don't have a lot of experience with full body. So it was kind of, kind of a shock. I went ahead and started with aesthetic. I know you guys probably would have told me to, to go with anabolic to start with, but I thought with my experience that, uh, it would be okay. But, um, I've really been struggling with the, uh, with the volume and intensity of the program. Um, phase one was great. Whenever I got into uh, phase two though, I started dealing with a lot of, uh, joint pain, um, just struggling to find motivation to do the, to do the foundational workouts. Um, I went from whenever I started phase one, I was doing a, uh, I was doing a focus day of shoulders, a focus day of core. And then I was doing one day of, uh, Olympic lifting on the weekends, uh, very lightweight just because that's a passion of mine. Um, so when I started phase two, I ended up taking out the Olympic lifting. I stopped doing the focus sessions, uh, just because of soreness. Um, and pretty much was just doing the foundational uh, workouts and just kind of barely getting through them. Um, I took a deload week to see if that would maybe help uh, get me rested up and so I could keep the intensity up. But I've just been really struggling uh, with soreness, uh, muscle soreness, joint soreness. Anytime I lift uh, like uh, day one, doing the squats on day one, uh, whenever the next foundational day comes around i'm nowhere near ready to deadlift i feel like i'm just super uh sore super tight still um so i've been kind of like stretching them out you know taking more than one rest day between the foundational days um just really struggling and so my question is um do you guys think like with the volume that it would be a, like with how high the volume is and aesthetic um especially going into phase three would i be better off uh just stopping in the middle of the program since i'm struggling so much um, and maybe going back to something like anabolic, uh, or it would it be better just to keep like super lightweight, um, you know, focus on form and, uh, just like get through it and then move on to something else. Or what, what, what would you guys recommend there? It's, it's too late for that second part. You're already overtrained. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, seriously. So anabolic would be fine, but you know what, with your powerlifting background, I would love to see you do symmetry. Yeah. I bet you, I bet you symmetry will blow your mind, especially with your experience with bilateral squats and deadlifts and presses and all that stuff. I bet you symmetry would get your body exactly where you want. I, I also want to comment on the transition from going from a, you know, two body part type of split to full body. Uh, this was a similar thing that I had to deal with because I was, I trained that way for so many years and your, your mindset has to shift because you are, you're doing these bigger compound lifts that are more taxing on the body when you're doing like a full body routine like that three days a week. And this is yeah. where the, the two in the tank mm -hmm. thing you may have heard of talk about before is so important. Oh yeah. And I had a hard time with that because I, up until that point, I could really kind of hammer those two body parts because I didn't, I didn't have to worry about it because I wasn't going to hit it for a few, I had plenty of days of recovery before I'd hit those two body parts again, because I'd cycled through other body parts. Right. So um, right. I, I was able to train at a higher intensity because of the split. So I had to learn to back off of the, you know, training right to failure or, you know, if it, the, the program called for five or six reps, I was, you know, barely getting the fifth or sixth rep up versus, you know, switching over to this, like, okay, I need to be able to l choose a weight that I could have done two or three more reps when I, when I hit my five set, my five reps or whatever I thought. Um, so that, that's part of a, the mental process you're probably going to have to go through. I don't know if that, if that hits home at all for you, but that was a challenge for me yeah. for a while. So that could be playing into why you feel that way too. Yeah. And aesthetics, a lot of volume on top of it. Yeah. I think your intuition initially with anabolic was where we would have probably directed you and just, especially for the tra transition from split to now total body, you know, like it, that's why we, we kind of direct people in that direction first, just so the volume is a bit lower. You can be a little more focused and, and, you know, um, you know, pay attention to what your body signals are and how it's feeling through that process. But at this point, you know, getting to that, uh, overtraining state, I think, uh, you know, Sal's advice with symmetry, you know, kind of going through that. And then maybe after that transitioning to anabolic would be my suggestion. Yeah, that would, that would be, I think that would be amazing. I think you would, you'll, you'll be amazed with how strong you are after symmetry going into anabolic, especially the last phase of symmetry is a five by five for a few weeks. Okay. I think you're going to like it. Now in the beginning, there's some stuff you're probably not used to just go through it. Trust the process. Okay. Yeah. I mean, power lifters really benefit the most from this kind of training, just because, you know, especially people with the history back, uh, like you do, just so much bilateral, so much bilateral work that you've developed patterns and compensatory patterns that you're just, you're not even aware of doing this, the unilateral stuff that you'll do in symmetry. Yeah. 
You'll you'll notice some things. Think of it as a performance okay. enhancement too. You know, the more stable your joints are, the more force you'll be able to produce. You'll you know see your lifts um, increase as a result. Yeah. So, so Doug will send over okay. symmetry to you. So you got that now. Let's do that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank so stop, stop right now and just start you day one, yeah. phase one. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yep. Yep. Awesome. You got it, man. Yep. Thanks for calling in. Hey, I got one more question, real quick. Oh yeah, go for it. Okay, so. Um, I, I was trying to figure out how to word this in the, in the email. Um, it may not have come across like I wanted it to. Um, basically, um, you know, like I said, I did competition power, uh, powerlifting like 10 a long time ago. Um, and that was like the strongest I've ever been uh, was whenever I was doing that with my compound lifts. So that being said, um, I haven't like hit a PR in a compound lift in the, in the big three um, in 10 years. So is it, would you say that's just a result of like the fact that I'm not competing in it anymore, that I, you know, have switched my pr programming to, to, to do other goals. Um, is that okay? Like, I feel like it's hard to gauge, uh, my programming since I'm still not as strong as I was, you know, no matter, like I've, I, I, you know, I do one rep maxes and it's still, you know, 20 to 25% off of like what my maxes were whenever I was competing that's actually a so that's a really good question that we don't address enough i think on this show is that you know people think that this because you were at this level where you were competing which means you were probably pro programming and training to hit prs in your your meets here you are 10 years later and you've done all these other goals and training programs and splits and yet you haven't surpassed any of those prs when i'm when i'm gauging it in my is my programming doing well i'm comparing to where I was at the beginning of that program, right? So if I start, you start MAPS Anabolic, your, wherever your squat, your deadlift, your overhead press, where those movements are, what I want to see is improvement from that number. I'm not going to compare to my powerlifting self 10 years ago. And if you really want to go yeah. chase that and you do want to do that, well, then, then, you, then you run a program like Powerlift. And then you actually yeah. program yeah. to increase your lifts. And it's not really about aesthetics. It's not about performance, it's not about other things. It's literally about, can I get big at those or get strong at those core lifts again? And I think there's nothing wrong with a goal like that. I, I would recommend based off of the things you're telling us to do symmetry, like we said, but then maybe after symmetry, mm -hmm. you go do power lift or symmetry and then anabolic and then go power yeah. lift. So mm -hmm. nothing wrong with you revisiting an old, you know, a power lifting type of a program just to see what you got. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I would be very depressed if I compared myself to my, my all my PRs all the time. I'd be discouraged in all my right. work. My work yeah, yeah, that's what, it, and that's what I was thinking about. It's like, man, like I feel like you know, I, I feel like I'm more muscular than I was back then. My my composition's a lot different because I was way bigger whenever I power lifted. I was you know 280 pounds and uh, of body weight, and so like it's hard to you know I can't compare like my uh, my physique to you know between then and now obviously it's it's you know i'm leaner now and stuff like that but it's like man i'm just you didn't tell us that you didn't near tell us that, strong lucas. as i used to lucas be. you didn't tell us that you were you were way heavier and yeah, bigger duh. Yeah. yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's so many factors like okay you're older but you're not old so you're still in that prime age of strength but i mean who knows you know maybe your sleep is different maybe you're a dad now maybe you got a job now your training's yeah, yeah. different oh, you're yeah. much lighter like I mean, I you know when I you know when I used to bulk up to two thirty, I, I would hit some pretty crazy lifts. I ain't going to compete with that at two hundred five and training. Right, right, right. So yeah, there's yeah, a lot of factors. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, but we'll send you we'll send you symmetry. Okay, I, that's that's where I awesome. think you should go for sure. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. All right, Lucas. Um, so um, when Justin, when you see a big beard, yeah. is that do you have to yield to that because you have a tidy beard? <laughs> Kneel before the big beard. <laughs> you know, his. I, I like this stuff that we talked about because the, it is something that we haven't addressed that often. And I do remember this transition for myself because I trained like he did for a long yeah, he's time. He's like the same intensity and then you go into a full body. Like, yeah, work, and dude. the fact that he chose aesthetic, like that couldn't have been the worst situation, right? Like, and Justin <laughs> made a good point. Like just because you're transitioning, and I get where his logic was because he's like, oh, I'm an advanced lifter. They probably tell of anabolic course. to all beginners right. because I'm an advanced lifter. I can jump right to one of their more advanced programs but that, that's it's anabolic is not i do it i'm doing it right now yeah i say yeah. anabolic i, I keep it, coming back to anabolic it is not a beginner program i mean no. we we recommend it as a foundation or the first program but it doesn't it's the, <laughs> all of us run that type of routine all the time yeah. so it's a it's a very good solid program and for sure for somebody who is transitioning for 10 years of doing a 
two body part split six day a week routine it's be a shock to the system oh yeah anabolic is definitely the place you want to start off uh before you jump into something like aesthetic for sure our next caller is quentin from illinois quentin what's happening man how can we help you Hello, hello, Sal. Um, it's going good. And so I have a, a question regarding um, what to do in a cut in terms of like learning a new skill. So I'm thinking about doing some Muay Thai or some Olympic lifting. And I'm wondering, you know, there's a couple of trains of thought you could go down with that. But, you know, I'm kind of looking for some advice on that. That's pretty much it. Uh, okay. Wh which one's more important to you? Or do you want to do both at the same time? Uh, I mean, like, I think... I could do both at the same time. I mean, the Olympic lifting, I would just replace, you know, regular sessions with just some low weight, higher reps, learning the form. Cause that's something that you have to learn the form for. Yeah. Um, and then Muay Thai, maybe like, you know, once or twice a week, something like that. All right. Maybe, um, maybe knee your friend after a snatch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or knee them in. The <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, just <laughs> pop it up and just right into the face. So, so here's the deal. Olympic lifting is the, uh, it's the formula one of strength training. I don't want to piss go. off a bunch of strength athletes that do other sports, but kidding me. It is. It's the, the most, it's the pinnacle. It's the most complicated. It's the most skill the skill yeah. is required. There's, there's sure. no, nothing compares to it in terms of skill with, with, uh, with strength training. So you're going to need to get a good coach. I would not go to the gym and practice on your own. I would treat it like Muay Thai. Like you're not going to try and learn Muay Thai mm. by looking at pictures online and, and kicking your, your wall or something, right? You're going to go take a class. Uh -huh. So I would go, you know, two days a week of Muay Thai, two days a week with an Olympic coach. That's a great balance. And the Olympic yeah. coach is going to make sure that you train the skill more than the, the lift and the intensity. Like a, a real Olympic coach is going to have you start with the broomstick and then you're going to move up to a yeah. barbell at some point. And it's not going to be about how much you can lift. It's going to be about perfecting your technique. That's gonna be so. That's gonna be go really, really well with Muay Thai, which is now also you just assume skill. something without asking him. I'm curious: Were you actually planning to try and do this all on your own, or were you going to hire a coach? <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna look at YouTube, honestly, and just kind of learn the Olympic movements from there. I mean, I've been watching it on, like, and you know, on YouTube and just seeing some of these guys like Lasha and you know Tao Tian and just the way they move is just so like cool, yeah. and I really want to learn that. Um, I don't know where I would even access an Olympic coach, a lifting coach. I've done Muay Thai for over a year before. Um, I just stopped because it was expensive. I'm a poor grad student, yada, yada, yada. Oh, gotcha. But um, yeah. yeah. So and, that, the, reason why, the reason why I think this is important is because not having a coach, too, would, would change the way I would approach totally. this. So uh, there's no way I would probably bite off both of those if I'm deciding. Because there's nothing wrong with like – you self-teaching. I don't think there's anything wrong with you. I mean, we, the resources that we have with YouTube now, and there's some great coaches online where you can find stuff like that, but I definitely probably wouldn't try and do both at the same time, especially since you're training yourself. Maybe if you had the luxury of, okay, I've got these two pro coaches. I'm seeing one, two days a week, the other one, two days a week. They're, they're giving you good feedback based off of what you're telling them. But if I'm going to go teach myself, I, 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 I got know. a question, Adam. What's, uh, I, I, boy, it slipped my, what's his name? Sonny Olympic, Webster. Sonny, does he have Olympic lifting yeah. program? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get yeah, a, get program. a, get a real Olympic lifting program online. So it's way yeah. less expensive than Do you follow Sonny Webster. No, I, I, I have no idea who that is. Uh, yeah. All right. down, he, we've had him on the show. So we had him on the show uh, years ago. Uh, I, I think he's one of the better guys out there. I really like him. Uh, and he does have an Olympic lifting program. So follow his content. Yeah. Cause he's got good okay. stuff and he's a real Olympic lifter. He's yeah. not like a CrossFit competitor who does Olympic lifts. It's yeah. like he, he really coaches. Okay. He's a good coach and teacher and he knows his stuff. He's been around, he's been around for a long time. That's why we had him on the show a long time ago. So definitely do that. Yeah. So, um, so the, the, the main part of the question still though, is like, you know, is this something that I would want to do at a maintenance cal caloric intake or at a deficit caloric intake? Uh, so I, I'm just kind of like, getting a little bit bored of just like, you know, the same, I've gone through anabolic many times and aesthetic a couple of times. And I've just been going in recently just focusing on like new mobility stuff. I saw Sal do some farmer walks with the trap bar. So I was like, all right, I'll try that out. Um, and is this something, you know, this new skill, is this something I should do in a deficit or at a maintenance or does it not matter? The, the skill part doesn't matter. It's the new work and intensity. Yeah. So if it's a bunch of new work and intensity, um, it, it would be hard to do that. And then also be in a deficit. Yeah. Because it, okay. you're more likely to overtrain and fry your body. I'm also getting the sense from listening to you right now too that you're just. It sounds like you're kind of just searching for something fun to challenge yourself and 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 do. Is that is that what I'm kind of getting? And you're just you have an interest in Muay Thai yeah. and a, okay. Have you actually considered actually running one of our less conventional programs like Map Strong or Power? I haven't run Strong. I have access to it, but I haven't run it yet. I've done Power Lift before. Okay, that one was really fun. Um, but I overbulked and I got like humongous. <laughs> um, in a good and bad way, <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah, but I haven't run strong yet. You would um, like one. I've been meaning. To you would like strong. I think so. Yeah, yeah I think you would it's like good, strong. Yeah, good yeah, yeah, and it's so different. I mean, it is really different. It's probably one of the most unique programs that we have as far as the way we programmed it. I mean, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you, so I mean, that's not. A, I'm not trying to change your mind about Muay Thai or Olympic lifting, but the sense that I'm getting from you. And by the way, Dude, I this think this is a really so good. Polar this is a really good conversation because I think this is how. This is important for people that want to have a lifelong pursuit in fitness. I have found it extremely important for me to always be changing my goals and having new things to go after. And I think it's very healthy to be to like kind of move in and out of these things. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's fun. It keeps it entertaining. It's challenging your body in different ways. So I, I like where your head is at, that you're like searching for a new skill to acquire or a new challenge in your training. Like nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but I, that, that's also why we wrote some of these unconventional type of programs is mm -hmm. so you can use those to, to, to pursue those things and have fun with it. So if, if that's not an option, then we can talk more about the Muay Thai and Olympic lifting. But I think the strong would be something you would love to do. And if you are going to teach yourself Muay Thai and Olympic lifting through virtual digital, I would focus on one at a time. Now, are personally. you treating yeah. Muay Thai more like you're you're sharpening your skill in terms of like you know you're throwing kicks and and punches and whatnot instead of like you know it just being like super cardiovascular like you're doing it for for the circuit and the cardiovascular aspect of it. In no, contrast, it's more, definitely more. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Justin. Well, just in contrast to like the power, because if I could see them sort of working together, if you're like focused like highly on the skill and like getting better at the technique of that, you know, alongside, you know, power lift a couple times a week or not power lift, yeah. sorry, Olympic lifting. Yeah. Yeah. I think the majority for both of them, I just a new skill that I want to learn, you know, okay. I'm 25 and I just want to see what kind of weight I can move around with Olympic lifting. It seems fun. And then Muay Thai is just, it's a ton of fun to learn like the art and the technique of it. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's really interesting. I know you've done it uh, in the past before as well. And you've talked yeah. about it. Um, and it's like just so much fun to learn that. And I would definitely do that one through a, a class um, a couple of times a week. I wouldn't do that one like just virtually. Um, but the Olympic lifting, I would definitely try to do virtually just because I don't have, I don't think I have access to like a coach on that kind of stuff. Good deal. Yeah. Sunny Webster's got good, good programming on that. Yeah. You yeah. can make it work. I, th I think, okay. yeah. I think if you go in with that mindset, but just, you know. <laughs> It, you gotta, you just gotta pay attention to you know how your body yeah, responds. Yeah. And, and, the, and, and the bottom line is, they don't even know, right? They don't even know. <laughs> they don't even. They don't even know, guys. <laughs> One of these days. Ah, uh, <laughs> I, you know the the. I don't know what Sonny's programming looks like because I wish I, I did so I could give you like more specific advice. I do know like what I would do with strong in Muay Thai. Like I could, you could totally follow map strong and follow the foundational days and then pull out the work sessions and yeah. trade them in for Muay Thai. Uh, for good sure. One. The work like session that. would go. So that would be a cool blend, right? So instead and, of, and you don't have to, you don't have to take so much time learning skill with Olympic lifting is like learning an art, uh, strong. You'll be able to jump in. So if you have strength training experience, right. you'll be able to jump in right away and just build strength. Yeah. And then you just pull the work sessions out and then yeah. replace it with your Muay Thai classes. Yep. Now you're getting to do some pretty cool, different, unique lifts that you're probably not used to like circus pressing and snatch grip deadlifts and like these movements okay. that are uh, in the trap bar deadlift carries are in there like there's a lot of cool movements yeah, yeah. that are unconventional that i think you'll enjoy the challenge of getting better at that then you can incorporate your muay thai on the the work session day so drop the work session days out of strong follow your muay thai there instead and now you get kind of a yeah. cool little blend there that's that something i would that's do brilliant. that's brilliant yeah. yeah brilliant advice okay yeah actually that sounds pretty good all right excellent yeah. man thanks for calling in yeah Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, I knew he wanted. He was going to learn it on his own because he was so uh, confident. You know, we got all the fun. <laughs> well, that's why when you were giving, like, this dude's going to learn on his own. Bro, man. when you were giving the, when you were starting to give you advice, I was like, oh, but this kid ain't getting no coaches. This, <laughs> yeah. this kid's watching YouTube right YouTube now. He's going to go, he's gonna go out and be a Muay Thai uh, guy. And uh, that's a lot. That's uh, a lot right there. You know, it's funny with Muay Thai. People have no idea. Muay Thai, boxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, brutal. They're brutal. Like, brutal you go take a, yeah, you take a class. And you're done, dude. You yeah. get wasted. So it's not like a normal, like, oh, I'm going to go take this workout class. Where It oh, takes a lot. It's super aggressive oh, yeah, yeah. and super skillful. So, yeah, both require, like, an insane amount of skill, like, those different pursuits. And they're totally different. So, you know, it's just kind of racking my brain, like, how you're going to manage both of those things. Yeah, 100%. You know? I love where the kid's head's at, though. Yeah. You know, I think that's a good, he's 25 years old, been listening yeah, to us. He's having fun with it. Probably fun. for four or five years. He's ran anabolic, aesthetic, all those programs. Totally. It's like, 
I think it's a it's really healthy and good to be challenging yourself that way. Just I think you're biting off more than you could chew when you try and acquire yeah. two really. I like the strong in the work session replacement with Muay Thai. I right, don't, I feel like that's a good. That was great advice because Olympic lifting, you're not going to derive tons of benefit for a while just because you got to learn it. It's so technical. You really got to hyper focus on it. Yeah, dude, and people don't treat it that way, and that's how people get hurt. But if you treat Olympic lifting the way where you learn the lifts. It's going to take you a while. Even someone who's really mobile and athletic, you got to give yourself six months before you're really pushing certain lifts and not even all of them. Like I think even a snatch, for example, for some people take it even longer. Yeah. Next caller is Rich from Colorado. Rich, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? I appreciate the time. Thanks for uh, for taking the call and for taking the question. A uh, little background. I've only been listening to you guys for about, I'd say, three months. So it was awesome to find you guys. Uh, you got to come up on my For You page. And as a process of seeing you, my For You page ended up going to the YouTube, ended up going to the Spotify, and I've been sold on it ever since. Um, that being said, I'll get right to my question. A little bit of background. I've been lifting for about consistently about 15 years. Started when I was 19, um, but consistently started hitting at around 26, 41 now, 5'11, about 188, 189 pounds. Um, I'm about eight weeks post distal bicep tendon rupture Ooh. so distal bicep tendon rupture ended up rupturing from i was moving boxes in the garage it's always a freak accident how it happens so ended up tearing going up they ended up pulling it down um drilling through the radial and then reattaching it uh that kind of surgery is more like this picture like a button on your collar all they do is they just take a bicep button put it through suture it back in so it's about a 13 millimeter socket right here um, that has it back in. So six weeks PT twice a week, uh, successfully completed that. Um, after that, pretty much throughout the whole time, never really stopped training. Would just train uh, lower body, uh, you know, treadmill, things like that, incline, weighted vest, and things of that nature. And this kind of ties in last week or the week before you had an individual on who had a broken right arm. So kind of the advice that you gave him pretty much kind of already kind of answered my question. So it's the reason why I posted this question in a certain frame is as a trained individual or fairly well-conditioned individual coming back from an injury of this nature, right now we're at about 60%. There's really no problem with the bicep itself as far as flexion or rotation. Only pain that I'm getting is about right here in the wrist. And that kind of corresponds right with the part where they did the, they did the drilling. So Running MAPS Anabolic, like I said, listening to you guys for about three months, uh, picked up MAPS Anabolic, figured to go ahead, let's just start everything over. So I went from not doing the pre-phase, um, and I went right into the advanced, um, the advanced blueprint, so weeks four to six. That being said, my question was, as a trained individual coming back from an injury of this nature, how do you resist the urge to either add to the program or just say, you know what, I think I can do more. Like, when do you make that distinction based on the perceived exertion? Um, and don't get me wrong, I love the program. I've never been much into trigger sessions until late. Like, I really like the trigger sessions. I add only just some treadmill walks with the trigger sessions. So total workout is about 30 minutes with the trigger sessions only being 8 to 12 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, my question is, is as a, as a trained individual, how do you overcome that urge or that that wanting to, hey, let's not just jump right back in, but hey, I can handle more when you know how to dial it up, when you know how to dial it back. Oh, that's a good well, question. That I, took a long time for me to figure it It takes out. a really long time, yeah. and I think we all still struggle with it today. I think, uh, if, well, I mean, when you when you listen to enough podcast episodes, you'll actually hear us talk about still to this day, uh, you know, I tend to overreach. You know, I, I, I'll i always end up being the guy who flirts with doing too much than probably not doing enough. So it's a constant conversation. Now, the fact that you have us, I mean, this is kind of you, uh, I, I would try and get you to blindly trust us that that we've scaled the programs in in that manner. I actually, by the way, I would rather, I'm going to have Doug send you Map Symmetry, yeah, by the way. Thank you. So I'm going to send Map Symmetry your way and also Maps Prime Pro. Um, I just think that that is going to benefit you even more than anabolic, and I would follow that first before running anabolic. Totally. And then when you actually have the urge to do more, if that does happen, I would actually do more mobility stuff. Uh, and in your case, it would be shoulder and wrist stuff in particular because of your injury. So if you have this urge that I want to do more work or more things, I, I would allow you to, but then I would say but instead of us 
doing more work, lifting heavy weight or doing more exercises like that, let's, let's dial in more of your, your mobility uh, training. And then I would allow you to do more mobility stuff. Um, Yeah. As far as signs are concerned, um, if I start to feel a little tight or stiff, and especially if I start to feel a little bit of soreness or inflammation at the insertion points of my, of muscles, I know I'm going too much, going too hard. So even just stiffness, like if I get into a set and I'm like, oh, I need like three warm up sets just to be able to get full range of mo- like I know I'm overdoing it. So for me personally, it's it's mm-hmm. stiffness that I look at. Like how stiff and loose do I feel? If I l- feel loose and comfortable, I know I'm usually doing the right amount. If I start to feel tight, I'm usually doing too much. Well, this is why I like uh, Adam kind of bringing up symmetry is because uh, you know inevitably if you've been trained a long time, like we have the this amount of weight already in our head of our capability. And so it's like, it's a shot to the ego. If like, you know, you're starting over again, you know, you're working through an injury and to be able to kind of now just focus more unilaterally and with dumbbells and, you know, um, take, taking less weight. It's not, it's something that you can like refocus on, um, getting stronger, getting more stable, getting more connections. So it's a, a completely different mindset that you go into that, which isn't quite as uh, damaging to the ego. I, 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 it's just something too, that's going to benefit you longer term uh, than just jumping right back to bilateral barbell type it, training. And it'll be less tempting, right? Yeah. It'll be that's less, what I mean, yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll be less tempting to want to that urge to want to like, Oh, I know I I've done this before. So I'll throw this weight back on because you're doing all this unilateral yep. and isometric work yep. inside symmetry. It's so perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely where I'd want you right now, especially until we're we're talking about a hundred percent back uh, with your your bicep and stuff like that. So once you're feeling a hundred, then then that's yeah. a different story. But right now, while you're still kind of in rehab mode a little bit, but starting to feel better, symmetry I think is a perfect program it's for a good that bridge to kind of get. Yeah, there. and then the combination is Prime Pro, and so you know as that as that ego creeps in and you want to do more and more, totally. sure, okay, let's do more more mobility work. Let's keep working and on that, that. And that you can do a lot. You can yeah. do a ton of that. Yeah. So. Thanks for calling in, Rich. Hey, Rich, what's uh, what, what kind of teacher are you? Oh, uh, <laughs> so I work in oil and gas. Um, uh-huh. I'm a safety guy for oil and gas. I've been working on oil rigs for about 18 years. Oh, no shit. Uh, yeah. oh, okay. There's yeah. the I and team right there. Yeah, <laughs> we found it in the <laughs> able. Yeah, we, <laughs> we found it. We found that sucker. That's but it. I, uh, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. That's kind of when I heard the guy with the with the broken arm and you recommended symmetry. Um, I was like, okay, that's the that's the route to go, and I'm good with it because I don't mind starting all the way back over. Right. Cause it's a challenge. It's like, okay, how do I beat this right here? Like I already know how to train the body. Like how can I train this to say, okay, stop. So I appreciate it. Yeah. You'll yeah. like it. You'll yeah. like it. And it ain't, it ain't taking a step back. You just no, watch no, and see no. what happens to your body. Yeah. Yeah. You're, You're going to like it. advance afterwards. Trust me. Uh, awesome guys. Well, Thanks, I appreciate man. the time. Thanks Thank you, Rich. Right Thanks man. Have a good one. You know, it's funny. A little rig guy. I, yeah. Oh yeah. dude. Have you, ever, well, I don't know how, That's what he does now, job, but yeah. I've ever seen the guys at work on this. Yes. What was that documentary that was really good? Super dangerous. Or it was a documentary or a movie that was made. It was a movie made off of blood, a right? real, real story. Oh, I remember that movie. That's yeah, but these are movie. like, you mean modern rigs? Like, was it modern? Yeah, well, no, there's a story. The, the last big one that caught fire. There was a there, oh, there was a movie made off I of- I forgot. I know what you're talking you know, about. Andrew, you know what I'm talking about, right? He's yeah, like, no. Yeah, no, there <laughs> was, there was, a, there was a movie made and it was all based off of a true story. And it was a really good movie. I cannot think yeah. of the name of it right now. You know, it's funny. I like symmetry is one of those programs. I know it's it's you know it's designed to balance out the body, sculpt muscles. So everything looks really good, but it's al- it's almost applicable to almost any situation because yeah. of the nature of the program. It's going to bring out and strengthen imbalances and weaknesses. And oh, it really, it really doesn't make a huge difference if you're a strength athlete, if you're endurance. If you want to work on mobility, like it's it's all those. It things. just reinforces everything. Totally, it's just, uh, yeah, beneficial for everybody. Deepwater Horizon. Thank oh yeah, you. thank you. That's Doug. the one. Next caller is Emily from Colorado. Hi, Emily. How can we help you? Hi, guys. I am such a big fan of your of your show. I've listened to every episode, and uh, yeah, I just want to thank you so much for your life changing advice. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, quick question. You know, I know Sal is always saying that the deadlift is the number one exercise to work the entire posterior chain of muscles. And so I was curious if there is an exercise that works the anterior chain of muscles, if that's even a thing that's similar. Ooh. Hmm. Front All squat, the anterior front squats. Yeah, I was going to say. Front well, squats are going to be the closest. Yeah, but you're going to get a lot of posterior chain on that too, right? I mean, you sure, are, but, squatting, I mean, yeah. but I mean, what a, else are you going to get? Bench more? press lunge. 
<laughs> no, a front a front squat. You're gonna get shoulder and arms and core, and you get a lot of posture. It's really hard because the anterior chain and- doesn't work in the same way that the posture chain kind of connects and works together. Now, the anterior chain does work together, but often it works in conjunction. If you're talking about the whole anterior chain with uh, stabilization from the posterior chain, and this is just me off the top of my head because. I'm trying to think of an anterior chain. Like obviously a bench press is some is anterior, but that's not a chain, right? Mm. A squat is posterior and anterior because you get the the quads and the the posterior chain. So that's a tough one. I, I, I'm I'm having a tough one thinking about what like what like a full sit up to yeah, a bench like press, a hollow body <laughs> position, you know, plank, or- plank. Yeah, plank will be a good yeah, a good some, one. Yeah, yeah plank. Right. I mean, there, it's hard to compare to a deadlift, though, right? Like a deadlift totally. is going to to build a ton of muscle in on all those. I mean, there's some, you know, like back. There's there's flexion and extension of the spine, and you could lean back and get and get some range of motion there. But there's no lift that that I would want to do necessarily that would load that in a way like a deadlift, obviously. So that's tough. So any particular okay. reason why you're asking? Yeah. Just you know, I am very short on time and I am trying to find the exercises with the most bang for your buck. And I do stick to compound, but I'm kind of wondering like if there's a day where I can only do two exercises and I'm trying to hit the whole body, you know, if maybe there's something to to do along with a deadlift. Oh, okay. Well, that's, oh, that's, that's I, feel like, I, I feel like that's a better, so better with way. the deadlift. Uh, I like an overhead press or mm-hmm. a bench press with the deadlift. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. You yeah, got yeah, it. Thanks yeah, for yeah. calling in. Thanks that's for right. listening to every single episode, by the way. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, we extra, extra love for you guys champion. that have done that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's a, I I'm, glad, that. I, I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, because yeah, I, I never heard that question before, and I thought about it. I'm like, ooh, the whole well, It's yeah. a very logical like, <laughs> thing to ask because yeah. we talk about that yeah. the deadlift you know, takes care of the entire posterior chain, right? Ooh, right. medicine ball slams. I never think of this, right? So now yeah, all these exercises are coming I'm racking my brain because I was thinking hollow body position. But, but, but you like know what, though? What's more important because yeah. even like a, 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 a ball slams, okay, yeah, you're, or plank, right? Both those incorporate basically everything, right? But you're not going to get as much bang for your buck. Now that you asked her why she was asking. We had the best answer. It's, yeah, that's the best. Like that, that was the answer is that like, oh, you you are short on time. I mean, I don't want to like spoil anything, but we have stuff in the works that's coming for that. I think that addresses exactly oh, that. Like we are limited yes, on. We do. Yeah. What, what's the most minimalist thing that you could do to get the biggest bang for your buck? I think is that's a really good question. Stay tuned. Yeah. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free stuff. We got tons of free stuff that can help you achieve almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us on social media. Justin on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin, Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.